Hey, Haley. Leslie, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm great. I'm super, super stoked to do this with you. I know. Uh, we have so much to talk about. Um, so much great. craziness. <laughs> you know what? There's never a dull moment in the NWSL. I, I mean, after this weekend, it just... You're like, how can this continue? But somehow it just keeps continuing. <laughs> it is absolutely nuts, but so excited for this upcoming weekend. I know that there was a big announcement this morning. We will get to that, but I think we got to talk about last weekend first. Yeah, where do you, where do you want to start? Okay, I think like, let's just go game one, right? So yeah. Opel Rain, they go up early. La Somer puts one in. Um, and then the Spirit fight back with goals from Trinity Rodman, Ashley Sanchez, who were some big players for you that game? What were some key moments? Oh, um, I mean, let, let's start off and just build up a little bit, right? Like, you've got this You're right. DC team, right, who's gone through so much off-the-field turmoil, right? Traveling to Cheney Stadium, which is a very difficult place to play. So Crazy good. weather conditions. Turns out that game may have not even been played because of the field. But funny enough is they were the only team to beat Seattle on that field. So if any team is going to win, I guess it would be DC. But still, like the OL Reign, I don't know about you, Haley, but OL Reign was like my team. I mean, they were flying on all cylinders. They were. Hot. Everything seemed to be syncing up, right? Like Sophia Ware does, just the, the tacking five, everything. And so you look at this game and you knew that, you know, both teams were going to want to possess. It was going to be one of those games and live in transition moments. But I thought for me, um, OL Reign started out like absolute best way you can start a game, right? So good. But you have to put away your chances. And in the playoffs, detail matters. And you look back and I'm thinking about sometimes when Marshawn had the ball and instead of her taking it, she played a great slip pass to Megan Rapino. But those opportunities, you have to put those away because you don't know if you're ultimately going to have those again. And I felt like recapping that game, I was like, Seattle could have won that game if, if they would have executed in that final third. They outshot the spirit. I mean, it, it was crazy. Um, but what I love about this DC team is, yeah, they're younger, right? But like, I found this stat out too that I thought was so interesting. Kelly O'Hara and Kelly and um, Sonnet are playing together. They've only lost one game since what they've been stat? together. Right? Right? That's a but, um, great stat. I know. I know. Um, but I just, I love the collective effort from this team, right? Like, yeah, they have individual stars, right? Trinity Rodman is a star. And yes, Sanchez is amazing. And Andy Sullivan has played incredible this season. And you've got Sonnet and O'Hara in the back line. Um, but what I love about it is the way that they have overcame everything that they've overcome this season. They're confident, their momentum. Um, and with Tori Hustler even coming out, or Hooster last weekend, they still found a way to get through it. And I think that ultimately teams are going to have, and Chicago's going to have a hard time playing against them too, because they have so many weapons, right? Like They're so strong. So strong. And then Andy's in that middle holding it down, that glue that connector, that workhorse, that leader. Um, they're just a tough team to break down. And I think ultimately, O.L. Rain got frustrated. Um, I, I don't think they had that urgency that they have. And I don't think they put away their chances. Um, I think you have to execute. And in the playoffs, you know how it goes, you know. So, um, and again, I think that O.L. Rain had a lot to deal with in the attacking third and you know, Trinity Rodman, but I mean, let's talk about Sanchez and her goal and what she can contribute to this team. Oh my gosh, scoop, dank, whatever you want to call it. That was nice. I mean, just the confidence and audacity to do that. I mean, that's stuff True. that we do like plain pickup, right? And for her to do that, but that's, that's, there's so many special pieces to this team. And I think that's ultimately what makes this Chicago DC game so interesting, right? Is you've got both of these teams that have like gone through so much and they've been so good in this latter part they're, that are not now going to meet up. But I mean, I'm just, I'm proud of DC. I think going into that OL rain playing them at home was going to be a huge task and especially against a team that was in, in, in great form. But, you know, Haley, for me too, you have to look at both Portland and OL rain had buys last weekend. And sometimes is those a, can help you, and sometimes they can hurt you. 
I, that was actually a question I wrote down for you. You know, is it, do you think in this case it actually hurt both teams or, you know, was it just, you know, two, two games that kind of went the wrong way on the day? Yeah, I think buys can help you if you've got, you know, injured players, you've, you've played a lot of games in a short amount of time or you need to regroup. And I thought that Portland may have needed that buy because as of recently, they've been in a little bit of a slump. Things weren't clicking in the attacking third. You know, um, Crystal Dunn was out, which we didn't know at the time that she was pregnant, but they weren't clicking on all cyl cylinders. So I was thinking that Portland maybe could have used the buy, but I looked at all rain and I'm thinking they were flying on all cylinders, sure. super confident, um, playing, I think, in the best form of any team. And so looking back now, I'm like, you can get out of your rhythm, you can get out of sync. And then I thought it was interesting. I heard um, Megan Rapinoe or Lay Somer just saying, we're just so happy that we know who we're playing. Because I think that first week when you have a bye, you're kind of training, but you don't really know who you're training for, or what you're training for, right? And so sometimes that can be like a little bit of lost time. So I think that maybe those buys did hurt these two teams. And I think Washington coming in, having that last game, giving them more momentum and more confidence, it just ignited their confidence at the end of the day. No, I, I agree. And I, I think you can kind of say the same thing, you know, jump into the other game for Chicago. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think, you know, just when sports put a poll on Twitter, who do you think is going to win this game? And it was runaway Portland. Runaway. Everybody thought Portland was going to win. And, and then Kalia Watt goes down. I know. I mean, what else could have gone wrong for Chicago? Oh, and let's talk about Mallory Pugh being out the day before yes. with COVID precautions. So now you've got your, right. your best player, your most threatening player, right? Go down the day before. And then Clea Watt, leading goal scorer, going out in the 30th minute. And you're playing at Providence Park. They hadn't beaten Portland at Providence Park since I think my final year in 2013. That's a long time, long right? Time. And, but again, it, it goes to show you what Chicago's done an incredible job of is they've gotten really good this latter part of the season. And Rory Dames always seems to do this, make this late latter part of the season run, always does well in the playoffs. But, you know, ultimately, I don't, I don't think this is the way Rory Dames wants to play tactically or formation, but he does an incredible job of taking his personnel, available personnel, and finding a way to play to their strengths staying tight, organized defensively, living in those transition moments. But I think ultimately what the biggest thing for Chicago was is they scored early. To be able to get a goal in the first half, and then what they've done a great job is, is holding that narrow lead. I mean, to hold that lead in Portland is a very difficult thing. And what I loved is the fact that they figured, out, figured it out on the field. I mean, at that moment when Cleo Watt goes down, that is when the leaders have to step up. A Sarah Gordon, right? A, Me a Morgan Gattrat. Like those players have to figure out a way to adapt on the field. And they did that. And they had this tight block. And I think Portland had a hard time breaking it down. Um, and I think you, you look at Portland and I think Lindsey Horan going out the day before really hurt them. Um, you're not able to prepare. You're not able to really tactically change a lot of things. Um, but she's so good at breaking down those defensive blocks. And I think that since Chicago did such a great job of doing that, that Portland lacked that creativity to get in between those tight spaces and break anything down. And again, it goes back to Chicago. I mean, and what they've done um, and what they're continuing to do, that grit, the, the mentality of all those players on the field. It was, it was inspiring to watch. And I'm just, yes, they're my, they're my uh, former team, but it was, it was so cool to see an underdog come in and execute a game plan when all things are going wrong. I, I, I'm happy for them. And, and I think that they're going to go into this final with so much confidence. It was, it really was cool to see, you know, I think really everybody did. Everybody was writing them off. Nobody thought they could do it. And really though they were the, they were the people that were like, yeah, we could absolutely do this there was no lack of confidence you never saw them look frustrated and, and really Portland never was overly threatening you know and I think you're right missing Haran you miss her on set pieces sink drops a little bit deeper into the field yeah. you miss her presence up top but it was really incredible what they were able to do yeah I, I, you look at both DC and this this Chicago team and you look back beginning mid half of the season and you're like 
this is incredible, right? The runs that they've made and the form that they're in. Um, and, and that's why you love the NWSL and how crazy things can be. And when playoffs come around, it's a whole different ballgame. Details matter. Um, and it doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter the Portland won three trophies, right? It matters what you do on that day. And um, ultimately, it, it, it's, it's pretty cool to see what DC and Chicago did. Totally in agreement. Looking forward to this weekend. Big announcement went out this morning. Yes. Big um, announcement, pregame show, the warm up, excuse me. It's not even yeah. a pregame show, it is the warm up. What can you tell us about it? Oh, I'm so excited to finally be able to share it. Um, I'm super pumped. I, I'm so excited to be on board with Just Women's Sports. I've been a huge supporter and fan for since Haley came to the idea with me a couple of years ago. So I'm just honored to be part of this. Um, and I think that Just Women's Sports has done an incredible job um, showcasing the NWSL. But what this warm up does is it's providing a pregame and a postgame show, right? And you look at all women's sports and how there is this lack of pre and post game shows, right? But it's an opportunity to engage with fans. It's about to story tell. Look at all these incredible athletes that are playing, right? All the, where they've come from. Um, it's, an, it's an opportunity to engage fans and get them up to speed. Maybe, maybe you haven't watched the NWSL before. Maybe you need a quick recap on this league and the players. And it's an opportunity for us to analyze and break things down and also to have some fun. Um, I'm doing it with my former teammate, Angela Hughes, who's part of Angel City. Um, and we're going to do, you know, the best job we can engaging with new fans, current fans, and providing what these female athletes deserve. And Just Women's Sports is, is, is the leader in this and providing all these opportunities and resources. And really, um, I, I hope others are going to follow, but I think the warm-up and post-game show is going to provide this in-depth and, I mean, we're on site all weekend. So you're tuning in, you're really seeing things evolve in the moment, which is incredible. Amazing. Well, if you go to the Just Women Sports website, Instagram, TikTok, that's where the pregame, the yeah. warm-up show is going to be hosted. Um, you can get all the details there of when to watch, how to watch, um, and you'll be in Louisville all weekend. So for any fans that are around, I'll be there too. Come and yep. say hi. Yeah, come say hi and let us know like best coffee shops, best restaurants. Yes. Like, I haven't been to Louisville in a while. Um, feel free to chime in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely throw some comments on Instagram. Tell us where to go. Um, last thing we got to end with, you were a former Chicago Red Star. I just thought I'd point that out before asking, what is your finals prediction? This feels like the, one of the hardest final so predictions hard. ever, right? So hard. How do you choose? I, really, I could, and I, I'm sure people are gonna be like, oh, come on. I could see both teams winning. Like, I, I do feel like this is DC's year. Everything they've gone through, I, I think they've been consistently very good in form. Um, each game, they're, they're, they're getting better. They're figuring things out. I, I look at so many players, Andy Sullivan and Hatch and Sanchez and Trinity Rodman and the back line with Sonnet and O'Hara and Staub and just this performance. And Bledsoe, I forgot about her, how incredible she is. And I just think it's their year, it's their time. And, and everything they've gone through, it's almost like brought them to this point. Um, but then I look at Chicago and I think, God, it's gonna be a battle in the midfield. Um, is Chicago gonna be able to deal with um, DC's attack, which I think is gonna be so fascinating. And, and, and honestly, one of the best parts of the game, Sarah Gordon's gonna have to step up for Chicago on that back line and organize um, and do an incredible job. But I think, I think this is DC's year. I, <laughs> That's so hard to say out loud. So say, I, no, like, I, what I'm, about you, Haley? What, what do you I, think? I'm, I also, you know, it feels like DC's to lose. And I also kind of have that gut instinct. Um, and you know what, though? Every year, Chicago keeps finding their way back. You know, I, I, it, is, it is so close. It is so tough. I could see this one going the distance. I could see it ending up in PKs. You know, but I'm I'm with you. I think uh, I I really like what not both teams are doing and how they're making this happen in their run to get here. But I think this is DC's year. All right, we it hurts. Said it. It's hard to say. We said it out loud though. 
I know, I know. Either way, it's it's going to be a, a really good game. Um, you're seeing so many great players showcased. Uh, a lot of players going into national team camp, um, and two different styles, completely different styles. Um, one really likes to possess. One doesn't. One's going to try to stay organized defensively, live in those transition moments. So I think it's going to be a fun game all around. I love that they're playing in Louisville in a neutral site. Both those teams have won on the road at Portland and OL, right, right in, in Tacoma. So both of them have experience winning big games on the road. So I think this is just set up for such a, such a fun and, and refreshing NWSL championship, not seeing your Portland's or North Carolina Courage's in this final. So fans, tune in. It, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be awesome. And again, don't forget, you got to watch the warm up and the post game show. Yes. Uh, the warm up will be on TikTok, and I believe it starts at ten thirty Eastern time, morning of the game. Yeah, and 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 definitely tune in. We're going to try to get some some interviews from players who are not active, or you know, other TV personalities coming on pre and post. So tune in. It, sh it should be a really good time. It's going to be awesome, Leslie. Thank you so much for your time this morning, and I will see you in Louisville. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one. Thank you, you all too. for tuning in.